Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. It is good to be at the house of God tonight, isn't it? Amen. Wonderful service this morning. God really touched us this morning and helped us, and we thank God for that. Um, and tonight, we just want to go into the presence of the Lord, want to worship, uh, and then let's testify tonight, saints. If God's got a testimony in your heart, a song, a message, whatever, let's just let the Lord use us. Um, I do want to... Uh, remind us, as, as is usual, uh, what we do every year, Wednesday night will be our communion service, and uh, so we are going to do that on Wednesday night. It is not going to be a normal, regular church service. We are very much so going to focus in on communion and, um, and, and what it represents and what it was all about, and so, so let's remember that Wednesday night. Um, I do encourage you that maybe throughout the day, Wednesday, just really be communicating with the Lord. If there's anything in your spirit or heart that needs to be right, get that right. Uh, definitely don't want to take uh, the communion of the Lord unworthily or recklessly or indifferently because it is a powerful thing. And so uh, let's be ready for that Wednesday night. Invite friends and family members to come. And then, of course, Resurrection Sunday is going to be here before we know it. Amen. Invite all. Listen, people will come out to service on that Sunday that may not ever come out any other day. So invite everybody you can. Amen. We, we were packed out in this place this morning, but that's fine. We'll put chairs out wherever we got to put them. We'll do whatever we got to do to get everybody in here. And uh, so invite everybody that you can. I know that uh, Brother Justin and Sister Jess just ran over across the street and invited the neighbors. So praise God. Amen. That, that's a quick commute to church, isn't it? <laughs> But we want to worship God tonight. We want to magnify the Lord and, and let God use you tonight to bless one another, to minister to one another. Amen. So good to see Sister Leslie here tonight. I know she's suffering with a migraine, but we're glad she's here. We believe God will get rid of that before she gets out of here tonight. Um, otherwise, let's just go before the Lord. We thank you so much, Jesus, for the honor and the opportunity to come into this place, into the Father's house, to worship you, Lord. For, Lord, you seek those that will worship you in spirit and in truth. We ask that you would have your way in this place tonight, God. Use your people, Lord, to minister one to another, God. Let the testimonies and the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart, let it be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer, O oh God. Father, have your way in this time of worship, Lord God, as we come into your presence, Lord. Lord, we enter your gates with thanksgiving, God. We thank you for all that you are to us. We thank you for everything, Lord God, that you've done for us. We thank you for just being present in our life, Lord. Lord, we enter your courts with praise, God, because you are worthy of glory and honor. You are worthy to be worshipped, oh God. Father, Lord, have your way in this place, God. Heal, Lord, deliver, strengthen, set free, destroy every yoke, break every chain, God. Woo! Let the name of the Lord have preeminence in this place. And we will not cease to give you praise, but be careful to honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's worship, saints.
afraid I won't be able And I'll go down in defeat And he says, do you remember Where I brought you from Just take a look behind you At how far you've come And every time that you would ask me Didn't I? She says, my bills are coming to Lord. Six days is not that long. She hears a voice so soft and low. It says, I've moved like this before. I'll do this little thing for you.
know that I feel right now. God, I thank you. You see through your filled anointing in the presence of the Lord in this place. You just got to worship him. You got to push through. No matter how you feel, no matter where you just want to sit still, you've got to push because there's a blessing. When you're pushing, there is healing. When you're pushing, there is deliverance. When you're pushing, whatever you need, God will supply. I'm just so thankful. I love worshiping him. I enjoy worshiping him. There's nothing more that I want to do than to worship him. When I stand on that platform, trust and believe. Sometimes I just want to just let it all go. I was raised in worship. I was raised to give honor and glory to God for who he is. And I'm just so thankful. It doesn't matter what I go through in my life. He is my creator. He is my way maker. He's been my provider. I wouldn't be standing here today if it wasn't for the goodness, the mercy, the faithfulness and the grace of my father I am just so thankful I'm so thankful he's a good God he's a good good father and I'm just so thankful to be in this house of God to worship him he is amazing it's for you to stop and think of everything you went through in your life and you just stop and think because we're not only uppity people we're not so good that we can't come down just a little bit I'm just so thankful that I can say I've been there I've done that but I thank God that I that he kept that I got back up I should say I got back up I didn't stay where I was I'm just so thankful for his goodness and mercy it's the little things and the little things thank you Lord for breath in my body I thank you that I can move my hand and I can stop my feet and I can spin around and worship you like I thank you God it's the little things that he wants us to praise him for it's the little things that we neglect to give God praise for but I'm just so thankful for who he is he's the best thing that has ever happened to me he is the best thing and I just I'm feeling so overwhelmed I would have shot I would have danced I would have run around but who else is going to run around with me who else is going to worship God with me is going to worship him who else is going to lift him up he's the great i am he's the omnipresent father oh yes lord he's so good he's so good he's so good oh when you feel it i'm not somebody to hold it back i don't hold back when i feel the presence of god i'm not gonna hold it back i want my blessing i want my deliverance i want my healing Saints, this is Palm Sunday. They said, Hosanna, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Jesus said, if they don't do it, I'll cause the rocks to cry out. No rock crying out on my behalf. He's been too good to me. He's been too wonderful. You ought to open up your mouth and give God the best praise you got.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for delivering me over and over. All these years, he could have just let me go. He could have just let me drown over and over. Um, tomorrow makes 30 days clean <laughs> from Suboxone. Uh, not to say that it's been easy. It's been the hardest thing in the world. But, um, 13 years, I've been numb, completely numb. And I've come to find out that he didn't only just cure me from this horrible addiction. He's cured me from a broken heart. Um, really, I, Psalms 34, 18, it says, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. I've always had that spirit of guilty and remorseful and wanting, urging, you know, for the Lord to help me. But I just was stubborn. <laughs> stubborn Um, and through this battle I've just realized he's always been there for me through everything do you know how many vehicles I've rolled in my lifetime I've rolled vehicles no seat belt not one broken bone not one it says here in verse 20 he keepeth all his bones not one of them is broken (laughs) maybe that's me I don't know but uh, (laughs) one testimony uh, last Monday Mondays have been rough for me. I was in a real bad attitude last Monday. I didn't want to go to work. I get to work, and um, part of my job is taking patients back to the room and getting their history. Of course, I have to say, hey, what kind of medications are you on? (laughs) Sure enough, my first patient of the day is like, well, I took Suboxone. I'm not proud of it. I was like, oh, Lord, here we go. Here's the door I've been waiting on. And I was like, well, I used to take that, but praise God, I'm such and such days off of that. And they're like, really? Oh, my goodness. So it turned into 20 minutes of me testifying to this person. Got their phone number, told them about our church. Okay. So the day goes on. I'm still in my little attitude or whatever. Another person I take back. (laughs) She's like, you know, there's something different about you. I don't know what it is. And I was like, oh, well, it's just Jesus, you know. That leads into another testimony. She was like, oh, well, do you go to church? Yeah, I go to church. Here it is. Got her phone number. (laughs) Okay. The day keeps going on. I'm getting a little bit better in my attitude. Okay. Another person, at the end of the day, I end up talking to about coming off this medicine. All in one day. I was about to call out Monday. I wasn't going to go. I was in a bad attitude, you know. But the Lord had me there for a reason. And, um. There's a reason I went through all the stuff that I did. And I just hope to touch many more lives. And I give him all the credit. It's not me. It's just Jesus. I told that lady, the only good in me is Jesus. That's all it is. And I give him all the glory. He's kept me so many years. He's delivered me through abuse, heartbreak. He's delivered me through many addictions. Um, For crying out loud, I had a gun to my head for 14 minutes. And he kept me through that. Praise God. And I'm just so thankful for you all for praying for me and cheering me on. I love you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Hey, I'm glad. I've got a test. I've got a testimony. Praise God. I'm 46 years old today. Woo! Hey, and you know what? I never thought I'd make it to this age. Praise God. But God's got plans. Amen. We may try to prepare our ways. We may try to do whatever we want to. But the Bible tells us that the Lord is the one that directs our paths. Amen. He's the one that says you're going to do this, and you're the one that's going to do that. Amen. It ain't nothing I can do. Praise God, I'd make a mess out of it all. 
But thank God he saw fit to let me live 46 years here on this earth that I might be able to get things right with him, that my eyes might be open, amen, like Paul. Amen, them scales fell off my eyes and I saw clearer than I'd ever seen, amen. I started seeing through white eyes instead of red eyes. Hallelujah, I'm glad of that today. I'm glad that God saw fit that he said, I'm going to pull this little joker right here out that thinks that he can run and hide from me. I'm going to pull him out from under those rocks, out from under those caves that he's hiding in. Amen, running from God. For 20-some years I ran from him. I thank God that he finally uh, put a stop to it. And he said, I'm not going to let you go no further. I down that walks of life. Amen, I'm glad that he turned my life around and he saved me. Now I can walk through life now. Amen, full of joy, full of gladness in my heart. Amen, full of love for people that I never thought I'd be able to love before in my life. But I love them now. Amen, I love my enemies, brother Brett. I love everybody that comes my way. Hallelujah these days. I'm glad of that. Amen, I've got a testimony. And it's just the grace of God that I'm here. Amen, the things, like Sister Shawna talks, the faith, things that I've faced in death is unreal. I don't know how many years ago it was, but uh, it was the day before my birthday. I was, I was in the hospital because I just got in a fight, and some guy decided to stab, stab me with a knife. And the doctor looked at me, and he said, when's your birthday? And I looked at the clock, I said, 10 minutes. Happy birthday to me. And I, <laughs> hey, listen, he put that thing in my lung, and it missed my heart. He said, by about an inch. And, and, and that's just one instant there that God has delivered me. He gave me life. Hey, you know what? I was there. I was in the wicked ways of life. Oh, but God said, I've got plans for this man. Hey, praise God. I don't ever give up on your loved ones. I don't ever look down on your loved ones uh, because they're in a bad way. Uh, because you don't know. Uh, that right around the corner, amen, there's deliverance for them. Through the love of God, amen. It'll take love to do it. It'll take love to change all of our family members' lives. That's what it takes. It takes love. I, I'm a true, I'm a bona fide believer that, that, that through love, amen, it says the love will cover a multitude of sins. I believe that because family members love me, because the church members love me, my children love me, and it changed my life. The love of God changed my life. Nothing else. Praise God. Nothing I can do. Y'all need to testify tonight. The Spirit's here. Amen. I know God has done good for you this week. Praise God, we need to let it be known. Amen. We need to encourage each other oh, with their good words. Amen. That the Lord has done for us uh, through week to week to week to day to day. Amen. Pastor was talking today uh, back in the first church. Uh, they was in church every day. Uh, praise God. Uh, we need to get that desire in our heart. Amen. To have church every day. <laughs> praise God. It makes me happy. I can't hold it back, Sister Hannah. Hey, you going to be quiet? Hey, you know, give the mic to me. I'm going to praise God. Hey, Amen. I'll be, I'll not let the rock cry out. If it ain't nothing but for another year of life, hey, man, good friends and the love of God. That's good stuff now. Hey, Amen. Come on now. Let him rest tonight. <laughs> I think you probably were all a little silent because we probably all felt some conviction from that message. Everybody's thinking, oh, Lord, <laughs> what are you going to say about that, Lord? But I love it when God reveals ourselves to ourselves. There's nothing like knowing that the Lord loves you enough to say, hey, you know, you're, you're doing good, but you're getting a little complacent. You're getting a little apathetic. You're starting to let some things slide instead of pressing more into me. You're starting to say, well, this is good. I'm comfortable here. But I was just thinking when Pastor was talking, complacency is what leads to backsliding when you start forgetting about how good God is when you stop rehearsing the things that God has delivered you from when you start becoming apathetic when you start saying oh you know well it doesn't take all that or you know I you know I don't want to be the fool or I, I'm kind of tired today or I'm going through this today but as we've been learning in this church when you're going through anything the best thing that you can do is show up and press through because that is where God is going to meet you at so I'm just so thankful to be here today I honestly don't have a whole lot to say but I you know like I said pastor's message was so good today it definitely made me search myself and say Lord I realize I've been getting a little apathetic in my prayer life I've been you know doing a quick 
oh, Lord, I thank you for waking me up this morning. You've been so good. Bless the day. And, you know, and keep it moving and think, oh, you know, well. But God wants to have a relationship with us. Like Sister Ashley said, he does want our heart. He doesn't mind blessing us. God is a giver. That is in his very nature. You can tell that he's a giver because the word tells us so. And he gave us his son. But he wants to go beyond just giving to us. He wants us to pour out into others. Even like you, Sister Shonda, when you're having a bad day and you don't think you have anything to offer people, God can take that bad attitude and all and still use it for his glory. As if we're obedient and if we let him, sometimes we think we've got to have it all together for God to use us. But God, as uh, you guys don't know Sister McDonald, but she wrote this amazing book. And one of the phrases in her book, what I love to say, it's, it's just a beautiful thing. She said, God delights in taking ugly things and making them beautiful. And, you know, none of us look at ourselves and think that we're ugly. We look at ourselves in the mirror and we put our makeup on and we do our hair and we primp and we pop because we think we look good and we want to look good. But if we knew how we look to God, when, when he found us, what, how, what vile creatures we were, how ugly and how undeserving of the grace that we have, there should be nobody in this place that wants to sit down on God. I don't care if you just say I'm thankful that God woke me up today, that I was able to make it to church. I remember, I don't know if it was, I don't remember who used to say it. I wish I could remember that sister's name, but she would always just say, I'm thankful to be in the truth. <laughs> and that was her testimony. I'm thankful to be in the house of the Lord. I'm thankful to be walking in the truth. But you don't know people out there that are lost. You don't know people that are Christians who were going to church, who were not walking in the truth, who don't have have what we have who haven't heard this good word who's not getting the spirit like we're getting we have so much to be thankful for and it's people that receive the most that are in the most dangers of being apathetic because we get so used to the presence of God we get so used to the movie of God well if I don't pray I know sister Hannah's prayed she's got it covered up there or if I don't sing I know so-and-so's got it covered or if you know if I didn't study I know so-and-so's got a word and God is saying but but I want to use you when are you going to let me use you? When are you going to when are you going to be the voice that I can use? Are you always going to be waiting for someone else to to be used? So I'm just like I said, pastor, I'm so thankful for the message. I'm so thankful for the reminder and for the correction that I received because that makes me know that I'm I'm I'm, I'm a son and I'm not a bastard. God is still dealing with my heart and he's still correcting me. usually ever say anything like this but this is I just thought this went along so good with what um, pastor talked about this morning and I just wanted to share it with you all to obey is better than sacrifice I don't need your money I want your life and I hear you say speak of grace and my love so sweet how you thrive on milk but reject the meat and I can't help knowing at how it will be if you keep on ignoring my word you pray to prosper and to succeed but your flesh is something can't feed to obey
I've been holding on to that song for a while, and I play it for myself when I'm feeling like I'm something or I've got it all together or I'm struggling because the words on that are just so good. Um, I just was so convicted when I was listening to Pastor this morning. It brought my mind back to um, this story in Joshua, and I've testified about it before, but it's been some years ago, so I'm going to share it again. It's in the fifth chapter of Joshua. It says, And it came to pass when all the kings of the Amorites, which were on the side of Jordan westward, and all the kings of the Canaanites, which were by the sea, heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of Jordan from before the children of Israel until we were passed over, that their hearts were melted, neither was there any spirit in them any more because of the children of Israel. At that time the Lord said unto Joshua, Make these sharp knives and circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. And Joshua made him sharp knives and circumcised the children of Israel at the hill of the foreskins. And this is the cause why Joshua did circumcise all of the people that came out of Egypt that were males, even all the men of war died in the wilderness, by the way, after they came out of Egypt. Now, all the people that came out were circumcised, but all the people that were born in the wilderness, by the way, as they came forth out of Egypt, them they had not circumcised. For the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness till all the people that were men of war which came out of Egypt were consumed because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord unto whom the Lord swear that he would not show them the land which the which the Lord swear unto their their fathers that he would give us a land that floweth with milk and honey. And their children whom he raised up in their stead, them Joshua circumcised. And I remember when the Lord brought me to that part of the Bible and I read that story in it. It just smote my heart because that's, again, you always find yourself at this place of what are we willing to give God. When they were born in Egypt, it was a custom. They were circumcised at birth. It was not a decision that they had to make older in life. It was just something that was done. But when God brought these people out, he marked them again. And I'm sure that those children were old enough to resist if they had wanted to. They were old enough to say, we're out of the law. We've been born this way. God has moved for us. He's he's led us by a, a cloud and a fire by night. God's still with us. We don't need to do these things. But God, it was important to him. And right after, it says further on in the chapter, when after they were healed from their circumcision, that manna ceased to fall. And they had to trust in God. And I feel like once again we're at that place as a church. Are we really willing and ready to offer up the most precious part of ourselves, and willingly lay down and let God do the, the surgery upon our heart and take out the things that don't please him? Take away the things that will mark us, that when other people see us, when they are intimate with us in our life, they will know that something's different because we don't look like the world. But God cannot do that work unless we're willing and ready. And pastor preached all over me today, and you just have to know that God knows what we need to hear when we need it, that I have been so guilty of just coming in and saying the prayers that are necessary and just creeping by. That's not how I want to live my life. I don't want to be distracted. I don't want to be overwhelmed with problems. One day, all of these things will pass away, even the things that I'm facing with Gavin. Sometimes those things seem so great, but even that is pales in comparison to knowing that I don't want to come in here and do my just a just thing and miss out on God because I'm not willing to take the time to be consistent in prayer. I'm not willing to take the time to fast. Those things are in the Bible. And when he was talking this morning about being healed, part of the in the New Testament, part of what it talks about, about being healed, and I know that we've all touched on this before, is it talks about confessing your faults to one another, that you may be healed. Are we doing those things? I know that Sister Shonda has a wonderful testimony, and I rejoice with her in that. But where are the testimonies that God helped me not to gossip? I've been 14 days without gossip. I haven't been bitter. I haven't backbit. I haven't been a a sore in my family. I haven't gotten angry at my husband. God has helped me be obedient. 
Those are just as important as the deliverances from substances and from sexual sin. We like to talk about those. But unless we are willing to let God take that knife out and get into the things that really matter, we might as well not even come here. We might as well eat and be married for tomorrow we die. But this is serious. There is a hell coming for you. There is a devil coming for me every day when I make up my mind to be a Christian every day. But God has given us provision vision through the cross all of these things that we fight if we fight in the flesh we will fail but if we live after the spirit God has given us power and strength to overcome I just love this place I love the word of God here I love the worship that we have here and I love the sincere desire that God has given each and every one of us to want to serve him not just in mouth service but in the ways that matter in the ways that people see that it says here that, that all till all the men of war. And I just look at my own past and I see maybe not men of war, but I see people eating up with bitterness. And they laid down and they died and they bleached their bones in the wilderness. I don't want to pretty it up for my generations, lest I don't want to stop at losing standards. And then when my children get there, I have refused to let God get to the important parts of my heart. I don't want to be that generation. I want God to take that knife and cut away everything that doesn't please him. Everything. It's not about the clothes. It's not about the hair. It's not about the makeup. It's about the desires of our heart and what we really do each and every day. Do we fast? Do we pray? Do we really seek God for decisions in our life? Do we really ask God to help us? Do we just want to be delivered from the things that people can see? Or do we want to be delivered from the little foxes that spoil the vine? I want to go all the way. I want to go all the way to the kingdom. I don't want to get there and him tell me to turn around that he doesn't know me. Because we all know we look ourselves in the mirror every day. We know the things that we gloss over. God knows the things that we gloss over. And unless we are being faithful in prayer, unless we are being faithful in fasting things of this world, when the Holy Spirit speaks to us to convict us about those little things, that voice is so small and so quiet. And our carnal man is so big and loud that it will choke it out. It won't even have a voice in your home. It won't have a voice in your life. It doesn't work unless we do it every day. It's a discipline. We're soldiers. We can't go out to war the day before and pretend like we're prepared. But it comes from a dedicated life every day. God, I'm going to obey you from the smallest to the greatest, not because my righteousness can be achieved by myself, but because you hate sin. I love sin. You hate sin. And the only way that I can be free is by doing what the word of God says and taking it and applying it to every day of my life, every area of my life. I just love the Lord and I just want to make it to the kingdom. All right, I'll tell myself, praise God. So, um, let's see here. For the last several weeks, the Lord's been dealing with me about social media, my time that I spend on social media myself, you know. And um, I don't know, one morning I woke up and the Lord's like, you know, why would you spend your time in a virtual world that I didn't even create for you? And you're not even spending it in the time, in the world that I did, in fact, create for you, you know. And that hit me so hard. And uh, because that's, that's something fake. What, the, what God offers, the devil offer, also offers, but uh, what, what do you call it? A uh, counterfeit of what God offers you, you know. And I was like, yeah, that's true, you know. And it, I think it's so easy for me. And I could be like, oh, well, I stay home with the kids and stuff, blah, blah, you know. But, um, and in the season that I have been in with the children. But, um, you know, so I was like, okay, God, you know. And then I would kind of, I'd get convicted about it. And then I wouldn't. And that's the thing about complacency is that you start getting seared over where you're not 
bothered about it, you know, and uh, I'll I'll be honest with you, that's where I was at, I was like, oh, it can't be that bad, you know, and then um, God, uh, he'll, I love how pastor was preaching, it will take your will, you know, too, and I was like, man, that hit me too, but then again, steered over, like, oh, it's not that bad, you know, (laughs) and then, um, let's see here, I had a uh, weird dream. At first, I thought it was a nightmare, and I was writing the girls, and I was like, man, what's with these nightmares, you know? And then as my day went on, I was like, hold on. You know, the Lord started speaking to me about that dream, and uh, it was, and I'll share it with you guys. It was, uh, I was going to my childhood friend's home for a party, and I couldn't wait to go look inside because I haven't been in there since I was a little girl. And uh, when I got in there, uh, the door was open, and these people in just black clothes were standing there, and they welcomed me in. I didn't recognize any of them, and I was looking around. I was like, man, this looks real nice. Y'all did real good, you know, And but I knew in my head, I was like, this is her house, but it didn't look like her house, and uh, as they're showing me around, I look, I peep into this room I guess I wasn't supposed to look into, and in this room, uh, there I saw some bones in this room, and these people wearing black. And uh, I kind of acted like I didn't see it, and I kept moving on, you know. And if y'all looking at this spiritually, you know, that there's bones in this house that I'm overlooking here, you know, that I know's there, but I'm acting like it's not there, you know, talking about this complacency in me, you know, and... Um, and so I move on, and as I'm moving on, uh, the house transforms into a mansion. And then I see everybody else there, and everybody else is at this party, and we're all hanging out. And every, like I said, there's just these people in black that I don't recognize, I don't know. But some of them sitting at the tables with us chit-chatting. Some of them's walking around. And then I notice some of them's just watching us like, they're going to kill us. I have that instinct that they're wanting to kill us. And I'm sitting here watching. I'm really watching these guys that really, that I get the bad feeling off of. It feels like evil. And I'm like, they're wanting to kill us. And But there's some sitting here face to face looking at us, smiling, hanging out with us, you know, we're cordial with. And um, I was like, this is weird, you know. And I start feeling unsettled. And uh then one of them goes, all right, time to play games. And I'm like, oh, no, you know, I'm not playing no games. And they, he looks at me and he says, he said, this is the rule. He's like, you all can go outside where there's sunlight and you don't have to play. He's like, but if you decide you're going to play, he said, you're going to, he's like, he was like, anywhere there's a shadow, he was like, if you step out of the light into the shadow, we can drink your blood and kill you. And we're all like, <laughs> outside we go, friends, you know, because there's only windows that's letting in a certain amount of light that you can stand in for so long before they can get you and suck your blood and kill you, you know. And uh, looking at all this spiritually, I was like, what's the men in black, you know, and uh, the Lord was speaking to me like the lust of the flesh, you know, those things that we're comfortable with. There's some things that we're comfortable with that we've gotten used to, that we welcome in our presence. There's some that's a snare waiting around, waiting for you to come drop in on them. And then there's those, I mean, they're all going to lead to death, you know, the lust of the flesh that's wanting to kill you. You know, and this guy, he said, and I knew that even if we went outside, that they were still going to make us play. They really wasn't going to let us go. You know, they was just seeing what we was going to do. But he said, if you stay in the light, we can't touch you. He was like, but if you step out into the shadows, he said, we're going to suck your blood and we're going to kill you. You know, and so if that's not a warning to us, that we need to stay in the light of God, that we need to stay in the word, and that we need to stay out from complacency because if we step out into that shadow just a little bit, they can suck our blood and they're going to kill you. And and complacency does lead you there to where you will eventually just grow cold 
not feel the conviction of the Holy Ghost, and then what? Then you're dead, you know, like the prodigal son who said he was dead, but now he's alive again, you know, again. So that means he was alive at some point. We know he walked away from his father's house, and then when he came back, he said now he's alive again, praise God, you know. And so I thought that was a nightmare at first, but then I, it just revealed to me what the Lord's already been showing me and, and trying to wake me up like, hey, I'm trying to get your attention. You know, you're sitting in the shadows up here just in complacency. Like like Pastor said, it's not even uh, sin so much, but you doing nothing or you just going through the motions and you just – you just being okay with where you're at, you know. And um, I was um, I was reading for some reason it came on my heart the other day, and there's this verse in Romans, and um, it says, "Be ye perfect, for your Father in heaven is perfect." And uh, I looked at uh, that word "perfect" with my con- concordance, and it said the word "perfect" there actually means uh, complete. In various applications of labor, growth, mentally and moral character to complete. So it's, it's the word perfect. When I think of perfect, I'm thinking no flaws, no no nothing, no no nothing. You know, but it's actually talking about a various applications of labor, growth, mentally and in your moral character. You know, like Pastor said, that faith to faith, that glory to glory, that we should be growing. And stay, instead of staying stagnant of where we're at, you know. And I remember I heard this preacher, he said, you know, if you can look back at a time that you were more on fire with God, he said, then you're backslid. He said, if you can think of a time that you were more on fire for God, then you're backslid, you know, if you're not there right now. And I was like, you know, but, uh, yeah, that's where I've been, guys. I just wanted to share that with you guys. And I think it really just hit um, – the vein, as we like to say, but, you know, pastor's message today, uh, my household's been a, a complete hellhole, just to be honest, uh, with me and my husband, and um, no, my dad is not my husband, guys, just in case anyone's confused, um, if you're new here, that is my dad, but my husband, he is lost, and he does not uh, come to church with me, but my house has been a total wreck, and I've been a total wreck, and my my mental state's been a wreck, but I, it's not enough for me to be doing nothing about it. I've le- I've left the door wide open, honestly, and uh, you know that complacency and that standard has 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 left it low. You know, when you get complacent, then the standard gets dropped, inch by inch, little by little. You know, and um, and like Pastor said, he could, God could be sitting there keeping that there for you because He knows. That's what's going to bring you, you know, that's the only conversation he's getting from you, you know. So, uh, just praise God. Finally brought me to a place of repentance this morning. Thank the Lord, you know, and I'm thankful the Lord is long-suffering and he has been dealing with me for the past few weeks over this stuff and just finally hit the nail on the head, I guess. I finally just gave in, praise God. But I hope that helped you guys too, but thank you all. over the pulpit and everything, and uh, you're so right, Hannah. Uh, Playing church is over with. I mean, we don't have time. I don't have time. Like Pastor said, nobody knows when their time is. And uh, when you get my age and stuff, you know, and uh, you don't don't know if you're going to wake up in the morning. And Monique, I pray that prayer every morning when I wake up. Thank you, Lord, for waking me up again. And in 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 my right mind. You know, I'm just so thankful for that because... I could wake up and not even know where I'm at, you know, and everything. So I'm so thankful for that. And I've been asking God because I've realized in some of my ways that I'm not on fire for God like I used to be and everything. And it's almost like, you know, (laughs) we don't have many older folks anymore (laughs) in the church. It's mainly so you 
I kind of want to sit back now and let them, you know, get up. But I can't do that. I just can't. And I've been praying about that. And I've been asking God to help me, Lord Jesus. God, let me do it. And uh, the other day I was reading uh, this came to my heart. And I just thought, well, I'm just going to start. And it's Psalms 118, and it's the Amplified Bible. And I'm not going to read the whole thing, but the part that really hit me. And it said, the enemy pushed me violently so that I was falling, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. The sound of joyful shouting and salvation is in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I will not die, but live. And I will declare the works and recount the illustrious acts of the Lord. The Lord has disciplined me severely. I mean, he has. He's been working on me severely, but he has not given me over to death. My God, hallelujah. Open to me the temple gates of righteousness. You're right, Hannah. We've got to live righteous. We can't do it sitting on the fence and one foot in the world and one foot in the church and just coming to church to just do our moral obligation. But, oh, my God, I want to find myself in the house of God. Every time those doors are open. Oh, my Lord. And it says, open to me the gates of righteousness. I shall enter through them. I shall give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous will enter through it. I will give thanks to you, for you have heard and you have answered me. You have become my salvation, my rescuer. You have become my savior. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is from the Lord, and it is his doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. The day in which God has saved me is a day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. I love that, Sister Rita. When you got up and you did what you did. Oh, my God. Oh, Lord. Now, this is what I was saying. Oh, Lord, save now. We beseech you. Oh, Lord, we beseech you. Oh, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you from the house of the Lord. You who come into his sanctuary under his guardianship. The Lord is God. And he has given light. He has given light, Sister Michaela, my God, he has given life, illuminating us with grace and freedom and joy. We have freedom to worship him. We have joy to worship him. Oh, my God. And it said, you are my God, and I give you thanks to you. You are my God, and I extol you. Oh, give thanks to God, for he is good, for his loving kindness endures forever. Oh, my God. I remember one time I was really sick, really sick. This is how important it is to walk, to be in the house of God. Oh, I was so sick and I was getting ready to have surgery and they thought I had cancer and everything. And I remember I used to play in the band. I came out of the band and I went, I had to go to the restroom, came back in and sat in the back. And when I did, this man was up talking and all of a sudden this guy got a hold of that man, that brother, he walked back there to me and he said, Sister Robin, God's going to heal you right now. He turned and laid his hand on me. Something hit my body. I went through the surgery. They set it off for cancer check. There was no cancer. No cancer. So, my God, find yourself. I don't care if you have to crawl in here. Like Sister Michaela did that night. That blessed my heart. She put a mask on, but she found herself in the house of God because she needed him. My God, children, look what God has done. Look what he can do. It's not over. It's not over. Oh, my God, I just thank the Lord. Hallelujah.
can't take it. <laughs> Was she going to get up, Sister <laughs> Slip? I was just sitting here thinking, um, listening to everyone and how God has been faithful all of my life. And that song really touches me because I know all of my life he was faithful. And I have so lived in the goodness of God. Even in the moments where I did not know he was there, he still covered me with his goodness. Even when I was all alone and my heart was broken and I was destroyed um, and darkness was in my mind, God was still there. And he was still making a way. I was born in the church that Jared went to and um, went there for a long time until I was nine when my parents divorced. And God had given me the Holy Ghost before we left in chapel on a Wednesday in our Christian school because God knew what was going to happen. God always sees more than we see. And he knew what I needed. <clears throat> And all I had ever known was church all of my life. All I had ever known was the people that I went to church and school with. And then we left, and um, I went to public school, which was a very hard thing at the age of nine when you know nothing but church. It's very hard, very hard thing to go through. And your life is flipped upside down, and everything that you always knew is totally different. And where you were always surrounded by light, there was now complete darkness. And when I say darkness, I mean darkness. Very bad. And um, I went through a lot of times of depression, um, suicidal, very dark in my mind. And I'm saying this because I want you to know what God can do. Because I know me. I live with me still to this day um, but I struggled a lot um, as a teenager and I remember one day I was having a really bad day and um, I was really struggling with the fact that I didn't want to live anymore and I had gotten to that point in my life and I know this is a very hard thing to hear but I would literally lay in bed because I knew God I would literally lay in bed at night and pray for God to let someone break in our home and kill me because I did not have the strength to do it myself. That's how bad I did not want to live. I look back at that now and I think, my God, all the things I would have missed. All the blessings that God has covered me with, what I would have missed. But this lady, and I still... I still think she was an angel. I really do. She knocked on my door. And she was the prettiest woman I think I've ever seen. And she said, can I pray with you? And I was like, okay. And she came in that little trailer that I lived in. And she knelt with me at that couch. And she prayed the sweetest prayer over me. And I know God sent her to protect me. Because God will do that in a moment. The enemy may think that he's winning. But there's still mourning that comes. And God always protects his children. Always. Always. And there were rough times for a long time. And things happened that I never thought would happen. And we came back to church, a place I said I would never step foot back in. Never would. But God knew. <laughs> and God made me miserable because that's what he'll do. He will make you so miserable that you can't even stand yourself. And I was so blessed so many times because God started to remove the darkness from my mind. He started to release all of that 
anger and bitterness and hatred because I was full of it. Things that happened in my life and I had been left alone and you build up things in your mind and you, you build up things in your heart because you weren't treated like you should have been treated and people didn't care about you and you weren't loved like you should have been loved. And it builds that up in you and you become so hard but God in a second can remove that. He can come to you and he can replace bitterness with joy. He can replace your sorrow with dancing. And he can loose your darkened mind and bring so much light into it to where no longer are you who you were. You, you no longer see things the way that you see them. And you understand that just a breath of life every day that is covered with his mercy and his grace is something so unbelievable that he could come to you when you are so undeserving and cover you with his mercy and cover you with his grace and refill you with his spirit or fill you with his spirit that gives you life and life more abundantly. And I'm, I just stand in awe of what God has done for me. The abandoned, he gave a beautiful family. He gave people that love me that I know love me because, I, because God did it. It was no one but God. There was no way that I could have ever been a good mother. There was no way I could have been a good wife. There's no way I could have loved anybody like I loved them. But, but God had to come in there. And he had to take my heart. And he had to remove all that anger. And he had to remove all that bitterness. And all of that that was just built up in there that the enemy wanted to use and say, I've got you now. You're not going to be what God wants you to be. I've got a hold of you. And you're going to serve in my world. And here comes God. And he said, Says, no that's my child you don't mess with my child I'm taking my child back I'm gonna change my child what you thought was gonna be evil the Lord turned around and made it for good and I stand every day and I say thank you God that you didn't leave me where I was that you didn't leave me out there serving the enemy but you brought me back home and I don't care what you go through in life if you can get that in your mind that he brought you home you have a home one day you're going to stand in his kingdom and you're going to say worthy is the lamb worthy is the lamb thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you that you touched me I don't care what I got to do, Hannah. Just like you said, I don't care what I got to lay down. I'll lay it down because he laid down for me. He came and found me when he should have left me where I was. But he said, no, I'm coming. You're mine. I'm going to do what I have to do in your life to get you where you need to be. And I'll serve him till the day I die. I will serve him no matter what I have to do because I want his glory everything that he's done over my life I could not stand it if it came to void to stand there and know what God did for me and me to turn around and just throw it in the garbage bucket and slap him in the face and have to stand before him and him say why after all I did for you why were you not a good servant why did you not serve me? I could not stand that. I would be destroyed because I know what I was. I know what he did for me. And I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you came and died. That you made a way that no longer we would be lost blinded or deceived but God you would bring us into a new light touch our minds renew our spirits I just praise him I'm so thankful I'm so thankful I'm so thankful I'm so thankful I just praise you Jesus hallelujah I just praise you Jesus I just praise your name Lord Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise. 
praise your mighty name, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm so thankful too, Sister Celeste. I believe that was an angel. I truly believe that was an angel that came. And you know something? There's an old song. You just let me get around someone full of the Holy Ghost. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, <laughs> actually, I was just getting up to bring this flesh <laughs> into subjection. But I was so inspired here tonight by, by sisters. Thank God sisters can rise up in this church. They have the liberty to rise up. Although I, it, it, it's really pulling on my flesh. i got to get up behind Two Mannings here. <laughs> it's hard enough with one. Now we got two at night. And we got to get up behind that. But truly, I, 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 did, I really did get up here to, just to bring my flesh under subjection. Sometimes when, you, uh, when a message comes forth and it hits you, you could feel it a bit here tonight. You could feel that resistance. We could feel it in the church. I could feel it within myself. There's something that I love about truth. It said, God put the spirit of truth within us. We need to be truthful with ourselves more than anything else. It says, one day that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. There isn't going to be any room for our excuses. We're not going to look up the Lord from our knees and give him excuses. He probably already heard them before. But we might as well get past that right now. We might as well just say, Abba, Father. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You know, there comes a point in time that you just have to say, Whatever it takes, Lord. Whatever it takes, I'm willing, I'm willing to go. There's always, every time that we come into this church, I, I, I say it almost every time I get up, I'm going to continue to say it. We are so blessed to be in a place like this. There's healing in this place. There's miracles in this place. There is the Word of God in this place. There's the Spirit of God in this place. But you know something? The sign out front said, let's tear the roof off. Let's tear the roof off, saints. You know, there's more. We, we have a lot here, but there's so much more. There's so much more. You think we've even touched the tip of the iceberg on God's power? When we see people come into the church, and we've had some people come in that you can tell are desperately in need. And today as the message is going forth, my heart cries out to them. My heart cries out to them. Have, well, I'm not going to say have I prayed enough because I know I haven't prayed enough. I know I haven't prayed enough for for people that come into the church that are in such, such a need, such a desperate state. I can remember coming into the church, I can remember as a young child praying, like Sister Celeste said, and not even knowing if there was a God. I grew up in a home where there wasn't any uh, uh, religion or any 
you know, trying to serve God. But s s even at that time, I believed that God was working. Because I can remember laying in a bed and said, if you are real, help me. Help me. And I, I know it's because from the, my mother's womb, he called me. From my mother's womb. There's no other reason. There's no other reason why I'm in a place like this. But for my mother's womb, he put a calling on my life. And I'm so thankful for that. Like Sister Celeste said, I'm so thankful that God called me. But, but I can't get complacent, Pastor. It said, commit your works unto the Lord, and so shall your thoughts be established. You know something? People say, oh, works, works, works. Well, you commit your works, and your thoughts will begin to be established. Your thoughts will be clear. Your thinking will be clear. Your mind will be on God. Each, each time we come together here, we have the opportunity to get a hold of God. That whatever He's working, just like today, the way He was working, if we're really truthful with ourselves, we haven't even been close to what God wants. What would happen here if we all begin to pray as Jesus prayed? He said, couldn't you pray with me one hour? One hour? That goes, that cuts. The pastor was preaching today. I was going, oh, me. Oh, me. Oh, me. We can always do more. What would happen? You know, there has to be something to tear the roof off. Somebody has to get a ladder. Somebody has to get up on the roof. Somebody has to begin to tear shingles off the roof. They have to put their works behind it. They have to work behind it. They have to get behind it. They just can't be spiritual. You're not going to get up on the roof and just come down through the roof. They're not going to lower you down spiritually. No. No, that was a physical thing. That was a physical thing that they put, they got behind that. We need to get behind the work of God. We need to get up on that roof and begin to rip off some shingles. Begin to rip off shingles and let, let that individual down so they can get help. Jesus, that's our hope. That's our desire. That's our desire, Brother Justin. My Lord, I've been out there. I've been out there where there was seemingly be no hope. And somebody, somebody cared enough. Somebody cared enough to pray for me. To pray for me. My God, somebody cared enough. Hallelujah. Just listening to everybody tonight, I, my God, I mean, you could feel the conviction this morning. and It was so thick in here, you could cut it with a knife. and I felt it all day myself. I don't want to get complacent. I don't, I don't want to stop allowing God to lay me down and work on me and, and cut things out of me. And My God, I was thinking, Lord spoke in my spirit a few days ago. You know, God's house, he'll set it in order. And that's what he spoke to me. In God's house, he said, what house will you build me? Made without hands. Nothing we can do but the work that he begins, that he's the author and he's the finisher. Let us say, that work he begins in us. I mean, my God. I mean, he will set his house in order. If we don't get complacent, if we'll seek his face, he said, draw nigh unto me and I'll draw nigh unto you. My God! The first Adam was natural. His nature, Adam nature, carnal mind, is an enmity with God. It was a cursed ground that he got brought out of. But the second Adam was a quickening spirit. Glory! Or set a fire in us. My 
my God. He'll set his house in order. He'll tighten that vice. That's how much he loves us. I heard him preach this morning. Boy, he'll leave it right there. As long as I'll seek his face, he'll leave it right there. To change your old mindsets, your old thought patterns. They bring things that's something he can do in his name, in his power. Something that I can do. But it's not about my house. It's about the house of God. Judgment must begin in the house of God. It's you and me. It's personal. But we're a body. When one hurts, we should all hurt. When one's complacent. We should be able to pray for one another, lift one another up. I could feel that in the body today. I could feel that cutting going on. And the Lord just searching. David said, Lord, make me to know my sin. Lord, help me to know mine. And God, give me the grace to give it up. Amen. But when we do, hey, you won't worry about no more dreams like that. When it's the Lord's house, he will search it. And he will make us to know them dark areas. And praise God, that's the good thing about James 5.16 and having them kind of partners. When you can confess your fault one to another, those things that you hide, you think you've hid it from man, but God knows when you can confess it, the more the light hits it, the smaller it gets. It ain't no longer a big old bully coming and trying to push you in the corner and shame you and guilt you. Ain't no more of that the more you put the light on it. The more people you tell, the more people you confess it to, the smaller he gets. And when that enemy comes, praise God, send a giant after a giant, you just start using them for stepping stones. Well, glory. My God. Amen. Let's allow God to set our houses in order. It ain't about me. It ain't about you. It's all about him. Well, glory. Church, let's fight for one another this week. Let's dig in and ask God. God to do a work in you. God to do a work in you, sis. Dave, Chris, Shonda, Brother Justin, when we do, you know what God does to us? Two-way street, baby. Yeah, glory.
Amen. Well, Brother Marlowe always says, close it in the bloom. And so I don't know how much more of a bloom we could get. We could try, though. This has been an awesome night. And we thank God for the word of God. It is a great surgical instrument, saints of God. Because really, everything that the word of God would require, would be required to cut from us, is really killing us. It's destroying our life with God. And so the Lord, because he loves us and he's jealous over us, uh, he gets in there with his wonderful scalpel. And he just begins to cut away at the things in our life. And uh, a lot of times people will look and say, did somebody talk to you? I said, no, the Holy Ghost told on you. Because the Holy Ghost will, because God loves you. And God loves us. And the Bible says that our fathers after our flesh, they disciplined us for their pleasure. But he for our good, for our benefit. And so when the Lord begins to chastise us, uh, David Wilkerson said one time, he said, chastisement uh, is not something that we should begrudge. It's not something that we should look down upon. It's not something that we should hate. Rather, chastisement is a declaration that we're sons of God. Because whom the Lord loves, he chastens. And every son whom he receives, he scourges. So the fact that God loves us enough, aren't you so glad that God will get in your dirty laundry? I don't know why he does. I, wouldn't, I don't want to get in my dirty laundry. But God will get in your dirty laundry and say, son, we can't keep going this way. I've got too much purpose for you. I've got too much of a future for you. You realize that God has plans for you. And God has plans for me. And so he says, look, these are the things that are going to withhold my plan for your life. And so in order for me to fulfill the purpose that I have for you, we got to get this out of you. And so complacency, apathy. Uh, and, and again, saints of God, it can just be indifference. Indifference is what it means to be lukewarm. He said, I would rather you just be on fire or I would rather you just be altogether cold. But it's the indifference that causes him to become sick. He said, I'll spew you out of my mouth. It, it, becomes, it causes God to become sick. And he says, I can't, this can't stay here. And he'll spew us out of his mouth. But children of God, I want to stay in his house. I, God, I want to stay in his presence. I want to stay in his, in, in his, I want to stay under his, the cloak of his mercy. You have to understand that the Lord grieved over Israel. He grieved over them. He loved them. Uh, it was never in his plan to destroy Israel. He loved them. He, he told that Seraphonician woman, he said, I am not sent, but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And he went before Jerusalem one day and he said, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. He was grieving. He said, how I long to gather you under my wings as a hen gathers her brood. I want to cover you. I, I, want, I want to bring you into me. I want, to, I want to embrace you. He said, but you would not. He said, henceforth, this day, is your house left unto you desolate? And you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. And at that point, Israel counted themselves unworthy of eternal life. And they desolated themselves to the point that when Paul comes on the scene, this great man of God sent unto the Gentile world, He's going to the Jews. He said, I love them. He said, in fact, I would be altogether cursed if it meant for their salvation. He said, I would be lost if it means they would be saved. But he looks at them, and after they have persecuted him over and over again, he finally looks at them and says, you have counted yourself unworthy of eternal life. He said, I'm no longer coming to you. Henceforth, I go to the Gentiles. And from that moment forward, the Jewish church began to diminish into the background until it ultimately was altogether lost. And the Gentile world began to explode. Because here, Israel was the firstborn. God said, they are my firstborn. 
but his firstborn rejected him. And I'm going to tell you, children of God, God's no respecter of persons. If God is continually prodding and poking at the heart, and we like them will not. He said, I would have, but you would not. Then he can desolate our house. And how horrible would it be, as Celeste said, after all God has done for me, for me to know that I had failed him utterly. And no, Brother Earl, no excuse will be even justified on that day. Not only has he heard it, we've already given it. We've already given it. Many times we have excused ourselves from what God has wanted for our life. Thank God his mercy endureth forever. I told the brothers today what I love about the Lord is he said, a bruised reed will I not break, and a smoking flax I will not quench. He said, in other words, as long as there is even a sign of a life, I will not throw it away. Maybe all you are tonight is a smoking flax. You don't feel like the you feel like the fire has gone out, but if there's still a smoldering of the smoke, God is still powerful enough to put you back into the fire that he Somebody needs to tell the Lord, fan the flame tonight, Lord. Fan the flame, God. If all I am is a smoking flax, Lord, fan the flame until I burn for you again. Glory to God. God is going to have people who love him more than anything. And I want to be a part of those people. Amen. And I, I love God, saints, don't ever quit giving him the glory. Don't ever quit giving him the praise. <laughs> God, don't ever quit giving him all the credit. There ain't a man in the world that has the kind of power that is necessary to do in your life what the Lord is doing in your life. Hallelujah. I appreciate being... A, a, a minister of the gospel, I appreciate being able to minister to your life, but oh, if it wasn't for the Lord, hallelujah. Woo! I God, worship God. Give God the praise. And, and there are some times that you're going to have to do it, though you don't feel like it. Sometimes I think we wait for God to worship us. Well, if I feel his presence, I'll praise him. Well, if I feel God's power, I'll praise him. You're just waiting for God to do all the heavy lifting. <laughs> but God inhabits the praise of his people. And so if you want God's presence in your life, you may come in here. Sometimes I come in here and, and you all may think that I am. I mean, I am the spiritual beacon that never, ever grows weary or tired. And I just can't wait to. That's not true at all. There are some times I come in here, and man, I'm so heavy, and there's so much going on that I would like to do like some of y'all and just sit down or read my book or fold my arms. But I'm not going to get any help if I do not get into his presence. Not all the time am I worshiping God because I'm feeling glorious. Sometimes I'm worshiping God because if I don't get some help before I leave the church, I'm not sure if I'll ever come back again. Oh, come on, somebody. Because I'm already coming in here feeling like the world is crushing me. And I don't know, I might altogether slip if I don't get into his presence. So how do I get in his presence? I praise him. I don't feel like it. Oh, I praise him. 
Sometimes, Brother Earl, it's got to get the flesh under control. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I don't care if you don't know the lyrics. I don't care if you can't get with the beat. I don't care if all you can do is close your eyes and lift your hands and just begin to say, you are my strength and my shield. Lord, you are my help. You are my deliverer. If all you can do is begin to remind him of the things he has done in your life. God, do you remember that time when I would have killed myself, but you came through? Listen, that is the kind of praise that will invoke God's presence and when the presence of the Lord comes in oh, hallelujah anything is possible anything is possible your healing is possible your deliverance is possible come on somebody God is able so I don't wait I don't know what sister Hannah is going to sing a lot of times but it really doesn't matter to me I'm just going to start out praising him. I, I don't know. I may have never heard it before, but it's not the song to me. I came to praise him. See, we've had times in this church, we didn't have no musicians. We, had no, we, had, we didn't even have music. There was no way to even play a CD. All we had was people started coming in. start praising God all of a sudden that thanksgiving would turn into worship and oh, hallelujah we had two men on the second night of our church receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost that had been seeking it for years in their life without music it was just worship so maybe some of you didn't come in feeling like praising the Lord tonight then that's the time you better really praise him Hallelujah. The moment you don't feel like it is the moment you ought to do it more than you ever have. Because you can't afford not to feel like praising God. You can't afford to come in here discouraged and leave discouraged. Oh, but there's an old song that says you will not leave here like you came in Jesus' name. Pound, oppressed, tormented, sick or lame. You want to know why? Because the Holy Ghost of Acts is still the same. So, Lord, if all I could do is just lift up my voice and start giving you all the credit for all the good things in my life, then that's what I'll do because I need your presence. We need breakthroughs in our life, children of God. Don't ever forget that. And I don't care how high you get or how spiritual you get or how lofty you get in your knowledge and your wisdom and understanding, there are times you're going to need a breakthrough. Hallelujah. There are times, come on, God, hallelujah. I think sometimes people think the higher you go in God, the easier it is to handle the attack of the enemy. But I'm going to tell you, the greater the level, the greater the devil. <laughs> he's not sending no low-life low, low enforcer after you. There's sometimes he's coming at you with principalities and powers. You can feel spiritual wickedness governing the whole area coming down on you. And that's the time you got to say, Lord, I just thank you right now. I thank you for the name of Jesus. I thank Thank you for the blood of Jesus. I thank you for the word of God. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. Glory to God. That's the time you got to say, I plead, I plead the blood. I plead, I plead the blood. Woo! I plead, I plead the blood. Good God. Woo! It don't get no easier the higher you go. And sometimes the higher you go, the harder you got to praise. <laughs> ah, glory to God. I see a lot of people wanting to aspire to great levels in God. And I'm thinking, I don't know if you're ready for this. Because maybe you think it's the name and the light. Maybe you think it's your picture on a pamphlet. Maybe you think it's praise of your peers. But the higher you go, the harder the battle. And you just got to fight harder. You just got to keep fighting. It. And fight. listen, this war... Oh, I'm... I... This is a fight to the death. This is a battle. We're not here to tiptoe through tulips. There are no goody gumdrops falling out of the sky for us. You are in a fight. 
and you have an adversary that is relentless. He refuses to give up. He is relentless. He is angry. He hates you. You go into the presence of God in a way that he was accustomed to, and now he can't have access to that, and he hates you for it. He hates everything about you. He was God, one of God's creations. He was loved of God. And God cast him out. But now he sees your filthy carcass coming into the house of God, redeemed and washed by the blood. And now you get to go to the throne. Hallelujah. He used to sing songs to God. Now you sing songs to God. He used to worship God. Now you worship God. And he hates you for it. He despises you. And he wants to eat you up. But greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. Oh, hallelujah. And so you want to know what he wants? He wants to stop you from going. <laughs> he wants to shut you up from singing. <laughs> he wants to stop you from worshiping because he can't do it anymore. Glory to God. So he'll come and attack you. And you'll sit in church and keep your mouth shut. And he's got what he wants. If I can't sing praises, you can't sing praises. If I can't play before him, you will not play before him. But I come to serve notice on the enemy. There's some of us in here. God's done way too much for us to let you win this thing. And sometimes your praise is you fighting your way out of it. Sometimes your worship is your warfare. You're letting the enemy know, I will not be quiet. I will not hold my peace. But I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually. <laughs> will continually be in my mouth. And that's why he wants you to shut up. Because he's now jealous of what you have. Don't you give it up for him. After all the hell he's brought in your life. Hallelujah. After all the havoc that the kingdom of darkness has brought to your life. Don't you give up your, your, your access to the presence of God. Hallelujah. Don't you ever let him win. Listen. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Somebody, God's helping somebody tonight because you've been sitting down and being quiet long enough. But the Lord said, listen, child of God, it ain't nothing but the enemy because somebody said, well, God doesn't really care about noise. Tell God that because around the throne of God perpetually, there are seraphims and cherubims crying out, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, the earth is full of your glory. Paul began to deal with all these things. He struggled within himself and he said, it rot in me, carefulness. He said, I was more careful. But there was something that also was rot in him. He said, and it rot in me revenge. Oh, God. And the Bible said that our revenge is fulfilled when our obedience is complete. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so the Bible said, lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless his name. Oh, lift up your voice like a trumpet. Come on, somebody. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and all that is within me. Bless. Hallelujah. There's sometimes you've got to come in here with a revenge down in your spirit that says, Satan, I'm going to praise him because I can. And you can't. I'm going to go into his presence because I can. You're not going to keep my mouth shut. 
Somebody said, well, I can't do that. That's not my personality. It's not a personality issue. It's a pride issue. Come on, somebody. Because God will deal with your personality. He'll deal with your pride. Oh, hallelujah. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. I can't help it. I just got to praise him. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus. And all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, praise God for saving me. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hosanna to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Woo. Jesus, 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 Jesus. You're wonderful. Your mighty God, your everlasting Father, your Prince of Peace. Oh, you're my wonderful counselor. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, if you need a breakthrough, praise him. If you need a breakthrough, praise him. If the enemy's got you bound up, praise him. Oh, bless the Lord. Praise him. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah till I'm delivered. Till I'm set free, till the chain is broken, till the yoke is destroyed, till the prison is open. Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, God, we praise you. We praise you, Lord, in this place. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, glory to your name. Glory to your name. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Push past your comfort zone. Push past your comfort zone, child of God. Push past your comfort zone. Hallelujah. I know you've been comfortable. I know you've been doing certain things a certain way, but my God, it's time for you to push past your comfort zone and say, Lord, I'm desperate. I'm desperate for your presence. I'm desperate, Lord God, to be what you called me to be. I'm desperate, Lord, for your mercy tonight. God, I'm desperate, Jesus. I'm desperate, Lord. I'm desperate, Lord. I'm desperate, Jesus. Oh, God, I'm desperate, Lord. I'm desperate, Jesus. I need you, Lord. My family needs you. My home needs you. My children need you. My grandchildren need you. God, I'm so desperate for you. I can't leave you like I came. There are things in my flesh, God, that are killing me. God, I need your help, Lord. I need your help, Lord, God. There are areas that are overcoming me tonight, Lord, God, but I believe if I can get in your presence, Lord, you can overcome, Lord, every work of darkness in my life, Jesus. I need you, Lord. Lord, I need you. I am a man of unclean lips. I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. God, take the cold off the altar, Lord. Touch my lips, Lord, till I speak blessing and no longer cursing, till I speak praise and no longer gossip, God, till I speak worship and no longer backbiting. Oh, God, I need you, Jesus. I 
need you, Lord. You've been so kind to me, Lord. Where would I be without you, Lord? Where would I be without you, Lord? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's worship, saints. It's just telling the Lord who he is. Just tell him who he is. I'm helping some of y'all because some of y'all don't know how to really worship. All you got to do is lift your hands and just tell the Lord who he is. Oh, God, you're my deliverer. You're my way maker. You're the very present help in the time of my trouble. Lord, you, you were there when I called on you in the middle of the night, Jesus. You have wiped away my tears. You have turned my mourning into dancing, Lord. You have given me, God, the all of joy. Oh, God, from mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, God. You saved me. You washed me, God. Lord, you spared my life, Lord. You cleaned up my heart, Jesus. Lord, you healed me of abuse, God. You healed me of manipulation, God. You healed me of misuse, God. Hallelujah. 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 I would have been dead. I would have been dead, Lord, if it wasn't for the mercy of God. You destroyed the strongholds, God. You destroyed the strongholds, God. This poor man cried unto the Lord, and you delivered me out of all my troubles. You delivered me out of a horrible pit. You delivered me out of all of my fears. Come on, if that's all you can do, be blind Bartimaeus. Jesus, now son of David, have mercy on me, Jesus. The weight of your glory cover us. Let the life of the river flow. Jesus. Jesus, my Savior, my Redeemer. You are the captain of my salvation. You are my anchor, oh God. You are, oh God, my shield and my buckler. Oh, Jesus. You are the Lord of glory. You are the Lord of glory. Jesus.
understand the need for this level of worship you will understand it. you need it right now but it's like you taking a bite of something for the first time and it's so good that you just can never see not having it again and if you'll press into the spirit of God like that it's so good I'm telling you, it, you will be hooked for a lifetime. Because in the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. It's joy like no other. It's peace like no other. It's hope like no other. <laughs> God, can we just thank the Lord for a moment for what we have experienced in this place tonight? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I tell you, every testimony has been tremendous tonight. Don't ever think if I don't have a lot to say, I don't have a lot to say. A lot of times, God's using you to say something that is so necessary. Don't worry about how much you have to say. Just let God use you and be thankful for that, all right? What an awesome night. 
Sister Michaela, I was thinking about the, your dream while you were talking about it. And they said, you know, we'll suck the blood out of your body and you'll die because the life is in the blood. Amen. The life is in the blood. Amen. And if he can drain the life, destroy you, come out of the shadow, saints of God. The Bible said that in him is light and there is no darkness at all. Amen. Wow. Amen. We're going to minister to the Lord in our giving. Don't head anywhere just yet because we have to sing happy birthday to somebody. I don't know if you know who it is. I won't tell you. I'll, I'll, be, I'll let you be surprised. <laughs> All right, brothers. Amen. Let's receive the offering of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Any tithes, offerings you have. Bring it before the Lord. Bless the, bless the work of God, saints. Go ahead. Tell you, I wish everybody would show up at Sunday night service. There's something special about a Sunday night service, I'm telling you. Whew. If you don't know now, you know. All right, Brother Justin, come on. <laughs> hey, this brother is happy to be 46. And if you've been where he's been and done what he's done and God had to help you out of all he's helped him out of. You would be shouting over 46 too. Amen. All right, Sister Rita, you're going to have to hold this one. Go ahead. Amen. 
All right, uh, Brother David, Brother Justin, Brother Earl, please do not leave right away. I want to talk to you guys about Wednesday night, so just hold on for a minute. Yeah. One fifteen to Wednesday, one fifteen to 2 o'clock. If you can be here, hey amen. Sometimes the kids just need some people to worship, to encourage them to it. Um, we want to, um, we're going to have a family fun night April the 29th at 6.30. It's going to be a potluck. Women's prayer is this Tuesday, April the 12th. Please remember communion service. If you're having a hard time getting here on Wednesdays, do a little extra and push here to be here on Wednesday because I really feel like, that that's something the church needs to do together. I know some of us have to work and all that, and I realize that. And we'll take care of you. If you're not able to take communion Wednesday night, we'll have some here on Sunday if you would like to take that. But please, let's all do our best as much as we can possibly to be here Wednesday night. I will not be holding you long. It's, gonna be, it's not going to be a regular service. All right? So just come, and let's see what the Lord has in store for us. I um, want to pray uh, again for the situation in Ukraine. Gavin, the artist family, we really need to pray. Uh, Big Al is having possibly a heart catheterization tomorrow, and it's very dangerous because he is very, very weak. He's, got a, he's, he's really having a lot of real serious physical issues. Let's pray for him and Sister Mary Lou in Dakota that God would keep him and that God would comfort them. Uh, Danny Jackson, Sister Lindy's nephew, uh, Lana Hoskins in, uh, and Brother Larry in Evansville, not Evansville, Louisville. Uh, Brother Shannon Baldwin, um, want to pray for Rochelle. Have you heard from her lately? Okay. Okay. Uh, but her mother, Wendy, and her son, Elijah, I'm assuming her mother is still alive. I uh, want to pray for uh, Brother Walt, Sister Rindy Johnson, uh, Sister Mary Manning, and then so glad to see Sister Leslie here tonight. I want to continue to pray for her, that God will continue to help her. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any, is there anything I'm missing, Sister Cheryl? Yes, we want to pray for Sister, absolutely, we want to pray for Sister Betty Ketcher, we also want to pray for her back. Uh, I saw her in the, I think at Walmart on Friday, and she's really struggling, so let's pray for Sister Betty Ketcher and that God would touch her body and heal her. Maybe some of you sisters can reach out to her and ask if there's anything you can do to help her, amen, when one member suffer, we all suffer, all right, so maybe we could do that. Um, otherwise, this has been an awesome night in the house of God. Wonderful day that we've had here. Let's remember Wednesday night. And until then, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you. May the Lord grant you peace in the mighty name of Jesus. May the Lord bless you in the city and in the field. May he bless you in your rising up, your setting down, your going in and your coming out. May the Lord be with you, keep you, cover you, heal you, strengthen you, and use you on this week. May God. God, be with all of our sick. Father, heal them, strengthen them, touch them, comfort them. God, all those who are struggling in their faith, God, watch over them and keep them. Be with us all through this week, God. Keep us until we come back again at the next appointed time. And for it, we will give you praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Look at somebody and tell them I was glad to be in the house of the Lord.